the Macheroni. I can see the young people who are supposed to even be more energetic. They are almost uh, sleeping. The Macheroni, what do call? Thank you very much. I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, the Vice Chancellor, uh, Dr. Tamirin. Uh, I have known him for many, many years. I used to go to his office begging for money. <laughs> still remember when you were still at the National Research Foundation. I also would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, my family, uh, my mother and father. They look very energetic. Yeah. I think they ran about uh, five kilometers this morning. Very fit. Uh, uh, my uncles, my cousins. Uh, also would like to acknowledge the presence of a delegation from the University of Johannesburg. Uh, the University of Johannesburg is a large university with 52,000 students. Uh, please stand up so that you could be acknowledged for the good work that you are doing at the University of Johannesburg. So you can all see the presentation on the walls, isn't it? Yes. So I was asked to come and speak about the fourth industrial revolution. So as I was thinking about the fourth industrial revolution, I was saying, what do I call the fourth industrial revolution in Gachivenda? <laughs> so this is what it is called. I named it. <laughs> Now, what is this thing called the fourth industrial revolution? And before we can talk about the fourth industrial revolution, it is important for us to understand what industrial revolution is about. It is called the fourth industrial revolution because we have had the first, the second, and the third. Now, for us to be able to understand the fourth industrial revolution, let us first understand what the first industrial revolution, second and the third, was about. So the first industrial revolution happened in England. England is a very small country. It's an island. We think England is a big country. It's an island. It's not even attached to mainland Europe. I was there, I was a PhD student and I used to work there. And England is not a big population. Why did it happen to England? Because if we were to use the theories of probabilities, it should have happened in India or China because these are much, much larger countries, isn't it? You know? It happened in England because of something called a scientific revolution. And this scientific revolution was ushered by people such as Newton, uh, Professor Matamba, uh, he used to teach us physics. Uh, he is the one who introduced us to the laws of motion. Very, very critical uh, for the first industrial revolution. Uh, James Watt and his understanding of energy. In fact, Newton uh, also uh, played around with, uh, with uh, energy. Because of the first industrial revolution, human beings started making things using machines. Like any other revolution, there was a group of people who were extremely worried. They said, these machines are taking away our jobs. Now, this group of people were called the Luddites. You can read about them. The Luddites were a group of people who used to go to factories and destroy the machines. It was a trade union whose primary purpose was to destroy machines in order to stop the first industrial revolution. Many of them were arrested, and many of them were hanged. They died away, and the first industrial revolution marched on. It gave us steam trains uh, the ability to get into a train, and these steam trains actually used to use coal, and you could be able to move from one distance to another. 
The second industrial revolution happened with ideas that came out of England. Now for those of you who are studying science, there is a big concept in science called electromagnetism. Electro meaning electricity, magnetism meaning a magnet. You know what a magnet is, isn't it? Uh, so if you have a magnet, and you have something that conducts electricity, and you put them next to each other, you know, and you move uh, that thing that conducts electricity, what do you think is going to happen? Electricity is generated. I can see some of you are thinking, <laughs> Electricity is generated by moving a conductor that is located next to a magnet. This is how ESCOM <coughs> generates electricity. What ESCOM is worried about is how do you move such a large conductor that is located next to a magnet? So they take coal, they heat water, steam comes out, and the steam moves a, 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 a conductor that is next to a magnet, and electricity is generated. 90% of our energy is generated this way. The reverse of that is that if you put electricity next to something that conducts electricity, it moves. This is what you call an electric motor. This is what moves those toy cars that you see. This is what moves electric cars. This is what, 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 what allows us to be able to cut grass using our lawn mowers is because of a magnet and the conductor and electricity passing through it. And because of these two things, electricity and an electric motor, we had the first industrial revolution. There is a beautiful theory that was uh, developed by a professor at the uh, University of Cambridge, a gentleman called uh, James Clerk Maxwell. Came up with very beautiful formulas. They are called the Maxwell's equations. Very, very beautiful. When he came up with this theory, a group of people who used to call themselves the practical men. They used to scorn the people who were theorizing. They said, you are wasting our time. This electromagnetism of yours is useless. If we had listened to them, there will not be any electricity to do. They were defeated, and the second industrial revolution marched on. The third industrial revolution happened in the new world. The new world is the United States. It happened, again, it was about conduction of electricity. You have material called semiconductor. Semi means half. They conduct electricity under certain conditions. Because they, can, uh, they conduct electricity under certain conditions, they are efficient switches. Because they are efficient switches, it means you can be able to build computers that uses ones and zeros. The computer that you have, whether it is your phone, it communicates using ones and zeros. And from there, what was born was Silicon Valley as a place. It used to be a farm, peach farm. Now it is a technological powerhouse. Secondly, something called a transistor, which is what actually makes our phones and our computers. They are made out of a semiconductor. Today, we don't have a single company that makes semiconductors in South Africa, let alone the rest of the African continent. And this is something that we need to change. And by the way, this concept of... Uh, so what the third industrial revolution did, it, automate, it automated communicating with ones and zeros. Because before then, People were communicating with ones and zeros without a computer. There used to be something called a telegram. You are young, you wouldn't know what a telegram is. A telegram, somebody used to be at the post office, they will take your message, they will turn it into ones and zeros. And there was a switch which you either switch on if it is a one, and you don't switch on if it is a zero. And then on the other side, somebody writes ones and zeros. 
and translate them into words.